anything is found conflicting in your information that you've provided, you're gonna have serious issues. So it's important that you're truthful in documents that you provide. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Princess Oliver and this is Princess Oliver's diary. Yay! So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please kindly subscribe to my channel. And if you haven't been liking and you're just watching the videos and you're not liking, you're not commenting, you're kind of wrong, you know. Please kindly like, subscribe, share this video because this is important. Now, on to this episode of the Princess Oliver's Diary, I'm going to be sharing something very, very crucial that you all should know about. Now, if you're looking to study in Australia, you want, so you want to get an Australian study visa, right, student visa, then this information is just for you. Now, this information can either be positive or negative, depending on what way that you say it. Do not sleep on this information. Guys, if you haven't shared this video, please share it to your friends and family members that would want to study in Australia. So therefore, in wanting to study in Australia, you have to get an Australian visa. This is why I am here talking about this on this video. So I will, I will share with you four things that could either give you a positive or a negative outcome on your visa application. Now, as a student, you want to, aside just applying for an admission and getting the admission, you also want to get a visa for you to be able to go to that country to study, right? yes right now i'm going to be sharing with you this information this information are very crucial if you don't know it i suggest it back watch this video from the beginning to the end because this information is very important now one of those informations that i will be talking and one of those things that could either give you a positive outcome on your visa application or a negative outcome one of them is your sop now what is an sop an sop is a statement of purpose what do I mean by that? It means that you need to convince, write an essay, letting the Australian government know why you have chosen that particular country, that particular course, and that particular state, right? Also, tell them about yourself, what this course will do for you, what impact it will be in your life, in your professional life or business, whichever way that you deem fit. Now you have to elaborate in your SOP. I always advise people that when writing your SOP, tell them about yourself, pour your heart out, things that you want to achieve, why you chose that particular country. You have to let people know. You have to let them know. So you're more like convincing somebody that, that doesn't know you why they should give you something, right? That is in their possession, e.g. which is the Australian visa. So you need to be elaborate. Tell them about yourself. You know what you've done over the past years why you're choosing to study now what this study course is going to you know do in terms of your life your professional life is it going to improve it are you going to do something better with it how are you going to impact your society your country your nation you know your state how are you going to all of these things have to be elaborated in the sop and also if I, it would do a lot of good if you google the state you're going to in australia and also include that in your SOP. If you talk about that particular state, for example, you have to be elaborate as possible, but also in being elaborate, you also have to be concise. So when I mean elaborate, I'm, I'm not saying go and write a 50 pages or 30 pages SOP. No, you can inculcate all of this in maybe in a two page or three page SOP or even one page, depending on how you want to express yourself. Do you understand? So the words that you impute, the, the, the manner in which you write it should also align. You could start from, let's say, how you ventured into that course, for example, and what impact it has had in your life and why you choose to go this other route. All of these things, explain it as much as possible. So your SOP plays a crucial part in your visa outcome. It could be negative or positive outcome but an SOP plays a crucial part. So you need to be very mindful of how you write your SOP. Do not just write it. Sit down, critically examine the situation before you put your pen into use by writing your SOP. That is the first thing. The second thing I'm going to talk about is your proof of fund. Now, what is a proof of fund, POF? Proof of fund. So you need to 
show Australian government that you have enough finances to take care of yourself while you are in Australia. Australia is an expensive country to school in as an international student. Now, an average cost of fees ranges from maybe 13000 to about even $25,000 per semester. That is a lot of money. So if you were to calculate that in Naira, that will be giving you maybe roughly about six to seven million Naira per semester, which is a lot of money. So you need to demonstrate that you have sufficient income to, to enable you study, right? So you're not just coming here to work and provide for yourself because if you're working too much, you might not be able to meet the study requirements, e.g. coming to class, assessments, exams, and all of that. They don't want you distracted. You also need to focus. So that's why your proof of form plays an important role in this. So they need to see that you have sufficient amount of money for you to study in Australia to pay for your fees. At least a one year tuition fee should also be in your uh, proof of fund, right? When I mean, so it depends. It depends on your school. If your school is a trimester, or just two semesters, right? You cannot calculate your proof of fund. So your proof of fund can range from just have the balance of your one year, right? Just have the balance in that. So for example, you pay one semester, right? You should have an extra one semester. If your tuition fee is 17,000 per semester, you should have an extra $17,000 as well in your proof of fund if you've paid the first semester, as well as your living expenses for one year. Now the, Minimum living expenses is about twenty-one to twenty-two thousand dollars per year. So add twenty-two thousand dollars plus your seventeen thousand dollars for the remaining two, for the remaining one semester. That should give you a total of about uh, let's say almost twenty-nine thousand. Uh, sorry, thirty-nine thousand dollars. That is a lot of money. So you need to calculate that. How much is that in Naira? So you need to have at least one year living expenses and your second semester. This is if your school has just two semesters, but if your school has three semesters in one year, so it means you need to calculate the remaining two semesters plus your living expenses. So your living expenses is $22,000, for example. And let's say you have a balance of one semester for that one year. Maybe it's just two semesters, right? That is another seventeen thousand. So seventeen thousand dollars plus your twenty-two thousand dollars, that will give you a total about thirty-nine thousand dollars. So you need to have minimum of that as your proof of fund. You need to show sufficient money, sufficient finance to be able to help you out with your studies while you're in Australia. And that is one thing. Another thing that you should also look at for this could either impact your visa uh, negatively or positively is how truthful your documents are. So you need to be truthful in submitting your documents. So you can't just present bogus documents without explanation. E.g., if you're married, let people, let the Australian government know you're married. If you're divorced, let them know. If you have siblings in Australia, you should also put that in your application. Put all of those things out. You have to be as truthful as possible because at the end of the day, you're going to be living in this country if anything is found conflicting in your information that you've provided you're going to have serious issues so it's important that you're truthful in documents that you provide. if you have various names that is not provided in the passports please showcase them if you have maybe something an ailment anything important that you feel that should be necessary that it's important to you that you know that when they find out you have a solid explanation for that i suggest you put that into your application so it's important that you present truthful documents in your visa application. When I mean truthful documents, I mean very truthful documents. If you've been denied visa anywhere at all in the world, no matter the year, still put that in your application, right? Because you do not want them to send you an email for you to explain this bogus document to them and you do not have you know, this to give to them. So it's important that you provide truthful information at all times if you've been denied visa anywhere before let them know your documents provide information and why you were denied the visa which year you applied for the visa reasons you, all of these things please put them in your re application please put them in your application it's very very important also another thing again that you should also consider is your age Mm -hmm. yes age is a factor age is a factor but at the same time it can either be positive or negative 
when i mean age is a factor for example let us consider your age and the level of education being 35 and going for a diploma or a bsc it's not an ideal choice right because at 35 you're expected to have at least had diploma or had a bsc right i get that but you age has a very crucial role as well to play in it so maybe when picking your level of education pick appropriately in order not to you know get a negative outcome but notwithstanding people can still get visa grants you know with diplomas and all of that but just match your age with your educational qualification it's important it kind of go hand in hand so age might also be a stumbling block to your australian dream if you are maybe a certain age and you're applying for something that maybe a younger person should be applying for it kind of will not be a wise decision so i advise that you cross check your age alongside with the level of education you are trying to attain in australia and ask yourself is this a possibility how many people have gotten what is the ratio of which people who get this visa to this visa you know can age as well age is also a major role so you need to also put your age in perspective when applying for an australian student visa age just think about age <laughs> another thing is the school you're going to i know there are some schools that are very affordable in australia yes there are schools that are very very affordable when you check on google you see the schools maybe go for as low as eight thousand dollars per semester or seven thousand dollars such as um tafe and other schools that are pretty affordable you, you look at it and say oh my god this is cheap i like this one it's a lot cheaper I always advise people pick the top 10 schools or top 20 schools to apply to really because these schools over over the years have given you know they've shown a level of reputation in with the australian government they know that their schools are up to standard they then meet all the necessary criteria that has been set in place for tertiary education so you also need to look at schools it's very important i will advise pick top 10 schools or top 20 schools i know that you are trying to conserve your money but whatever is what doing is what doing well like i said i've mentioned four things that could either be a positive or a negative outcome to your visa application for students now i only said it consider your sop which is your statement of purpose Consider your age. It's very important. You need to match your educational qualification with your age and also your the level of education you're going for with your age doesn't match. You kind of think about it. That's number two. Number three, your account is very important. You need to provide sufficient proof of fund. Who is sponsoring you? The people who are sponsoring you, are they aware they are sponsoring you? How much do they have in their accounts? What has, when I mean how much do they have in their account, I don't just they just wake up and go and put maybe 10 million, 15 million in their account. It has been over time. These people need to present sufficient bank statement that they can afford to sponsor your education to Australia. Australia is not cheap, so you need to have sufficient funds. So all of these things, it is very important to add all of these things into perspective. And this can be positive or negative outcome in your journey to Australia. So put these things into perspective before you apply for that Australian visa, student visa. Put all of these things into perspective. And do not lie or give any false information, misleading information. Make sure you're very, very truthful. You need to be very truthful because this can be positive or negative for you if you lie about some certain things. You know, don't lie about your age. Don't lie about your visa denial just be open as possible be very truthful because truth will go a long way in your visa application guys now if this video has been helpful for you guys please do not forget to share this video to your friends and family do not forget to subscribe like and comment and most importantly if you want to reach out to me you can always send just put a comment and i'll respond to your messages as you can see i've been responding to messages on the comment section so guys put a comment out there for me you know send me a message if you want to you know ask me any questions or anything that you do not understand and you like me to talk about it please do reach out to me and thank you so much for subscribing to my youtube channel thank you for sharing it and i appreciate you guys and i hope this video has been helpful for you if this video has been helpful for you please like subscribe share and comment on this video and you can reach out to me on my various social media platform i'll put it at the end of this video and thank you for coming to my youtube channel and do have a lovely day Bye, guys. <laughs>